And so you leave Billy Joel in 1981. Am I correct about that? Around there. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then mid eighties is when you start Cove City in, in Glen Cove. Right. And I was going through your client list and the names on there are freaking incredible. This is Holy by Justin Bieber, which yeah, I, phenomenal good. song. Was that was that tracked at the studio or is that mixed there? Piano tracked at the studio. John Bellion and Michael Pollock wrote it and sang it here. We tracked it here. Justin uh, heard it and um, they did whatever they needed to do to get Justin on the record and and we're really proud of it. Yeah. Yeah, they killed it. And he, did you see them do it at, uh, on SNL? I think about three yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, it was ago. great. Yeah, so, great. I've got. I've recently gotten huge into SNL. It was something I always liked when I was a childhood, when I in my childhood. But the last couple of weeks, especially now, it's nice to look forward to something at the end of the week. It's something that's you know that's spontaneous and 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 live. And so they've been doing some great performances. They had uh, Jack White, Justin Bieber. And now the Foo Fighters are coming on this week. Right. It's going to be. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. But here, I'm going to go off on a tangent. Um, but like just some of these names, the Dream Girls soundtrack, Instinct's Christmas album, which is something my mother played freaking all the time. Uh, let's talk about Love, Celine Dion, and the, the Private Parts soundtrack. I need to ask about that. So you recorded the, the Private Parts soundtrack because that's, that's the one that stood out to me because I was like all through high school, it's like a Howard Stern maniac. <laughs> uh, Howard Stern had two bands, right? Mm -hmm. um he had pig vomit too oh because it was named after the, the boss <laughs> yeah Wait, uh, was that so that i didn't know he had a he started a band named after him that's funny yeah he, it, uh howard stern is you know from long island he's he's a he's an old friend of ours jackie Roosevelt, martin right jackie martin is, is from bayville one town over so mm -hmm. you know we're we're the we're the uh, the big fish in a small in the small pond here, you know. We're, we're but now now we're actually worldwide. So there's been a lot of great stuff that's come out of here because of because of that, and because the facility is awesome too. Our client list goes large; it really does. Uh, you know, I was just with the Dream Theater guys yesterday. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, Astonishing was written here. I actually wrote the forward to their book to their the, uh, the Astonishing as well. I didn't know that. Uh, we've done a bu bunch of records with them, Celine. Uh, um, the Christmas record um, was was great. I played on that record, which is dusted off every year, and it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, J Lo stuff was amazing here. Uh, Howard Stern was just really great, by the way. Howard Stern is awesome. He's he's. Well, I mean, he's like. I mean, I'm I'm doing a live you know interview setting thing. He was that's you know he's the origin of that kind of thing. He was you know he 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 kind of in my opinion defined the long term interview, especially with live things. And then people like Joe Rogan after him, but Howard Stern was you know he's the guy. He is you know like I, I when I was a little kid, my dad used to listen to Howard all the time, and my mother used to never let me. But every once in a while, if it was something that wasn't too explicit, my dad and I would listen to it in the car and. Man, that was like just such a defining factor of my life to hear someone go on and just say stuff that you were just like, like what what the hell is going on? He's just saying what he's thinking. Who right. does that? No one, no, you know. It was and now, especially with the, with the internet, that's so normal. But back then, it's not at all. Right, it was on K Rock too, so there was censorship. So there was a there was a little bit of a, a danger in what he was doing. Now on serious, you know, I don't even listen to him anymore because it's because it's serious. I, you know, it's, it was dangerous when it was on K Rock. I liked it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I didn't. I mean, I only ever listened to him live on Sirius, But some of my favorite recordings are from like late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, yes. And his he had that he had that original K Rock studio, which was you know this big. And then they moved into a nicer one, which is more similar to the the serious serious studio. But that was great. You know, he would say stuff, and it was it was kind of like, oh, is is he going to get taken off the air? Like you never right. knew. And that, that's fun. And even in, re even watching it in retrospect is fun. Um, but here, I want to ask about, so you founded the studio in, in the mid eighties and your, your, your main role, you said you've performed on, on some of the records, but in general on a record that you're not playing on, how hands on are you with the clients? And, and besides, you know, being the founder, what is, what is your main role on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, it depends what I get hired to do. And, and actually, in a short period of time, I got to go back downstairs because I told you I told you who was here today. Right. And I got to go downstairs. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'm I'm I am here as 
first of all, as a saxophone player, if I get called to do any saxophone work, I'm here to do that. But uh, I built this place with a partner uh, and uh, I'm here every day. I do produce records. Mm -hmm. um, I listen to just about everything that's here and I'll give a thumbs up. You know, I'll make sure that my clients are happy. I operate it more as a musician than I do as a, as a studio owner. Mm -hmm. So it's more important for me to make sure the guitar track is right or, you know, you did cut a great bass part or drum or a basic track rather than worrying to try to make another dollar to book another hour of studio time. Gotcha. So you're really, you're really about just making it as, as efficient as possible. So you're not, Oh yeah, it's yeah. gotta be good. I've never advertised, uh, you know, the, our clients are our advertisements is what uh, happens at the very end of the day. And when you first started, were you getting big name artists or is it like a slope into that? Well, we did right in the beginning. We, our first artist was Taylor Dane. I don't know if you remember her, but she I was know. a dance, a uh, big hit called Tell It To My Heart. Clive Davis, you remember him? Yeah, of course. Clive Davis brought her in here. So in the first couple of months of our opening, we had a, a hit record with her. Mm -hmm. And um, then it came very shortly after. Who would you say, you know, out of all the people that have come into the studio that you were just like blown away by how hard of a worker they were? Uh, well, Dream Theater are the most hardest workers, but blown away, uh, Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Not, that's that's a historic oh, name, especially. Charles. I was just like, oh my God, Ray Charles is playing my piano and singing in my studio. Still got that piano? That was, that was a big one for me. It really was. Thank you.